Testing, 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 testing. Okay. We're going to try to study a different molecule today in terms of its bonding properties. Uh, let's go to the borane molecule. This happens to be a system that does not conform to the octet rule. You can see that we have here only six valence electrons because three come in from the boron. And with three hydrogens, we have three more valence electrons. With only six valence electrons, it's not possible for the system to conform to the octet rule. So as you can imagine, this is an unsaturated species. It is electron deficient. And it's highly reactive. And as you're going to see, it's in fact a Lewis, a Lewis acid. So how can we imagine that the molecular orbitals form in such a system uh, starting from the boring atomic orbitals? Well, we have to uh, assign a coordinate system and let's do so as follows. We will go with the plane of the board today being the X, Y plane. And that means that our z-axis is coming out of the board at us, and it coincides with the threefold rotation axis of the borane molecule. And let's recall that this molecule uh, goes into the point group D3H. And so if we want to use Mulliken symbols, to label the orbitals in this system, we'll do so using the appropriate character table for the D3H point group. Now, let's consider the valence S orbital of borane. That valence S orbital looks like this. I'll represent it as a circle, but of course it's a spherically shaped orbital. And that, uh, that boron 2S orbital here it belongs to the totally symmetric representation. In D3H, that means it has A1 prime symmetry. Um, when you see this prime, that means you're in a point group with a sub H. That means a horizontal mirror plane. In this, in this case, the mirror plane is the XY plane. Uh, and so when you see a single prime, that means it's symmetric with respect to reflection in that plane. If you see a double prime, it's anti-symmetric with respect to reflection in that plane. And so that'll help us figure out how to properly label these orbitals. Um, just like when we did the water molecule, we found in that case that the central atom S orbital could simultaneously bond to all three of the hydrogen S orbitals, and that's the case here as well. So we can write down one of the molecular orbitals as follows. And this is a bonding molecular orbital. Now I'll pause for a second. And as we found for the water molecule, in a case where we make a bonding MO, we can write down a representation of the corresponding anti-bonding molecular orbital by switching the sign on the hydrogen orbitals in this case. So these will go negative. And this is an anti-bonding A1 prime molecular orbital. So we'll remember to put the star here.
And uh, let's also notice that by switching the sign, we gave rise to internuclear nodes that are characteristic of antibonding interactions. Okay, uh, that does it for the 2s orbital. Uh, what about the px orbital on the boron? We'll go systematically from the s through the px, py, and pz valence orbitals of the boron. So this px orbital lies in the plane, and this is reminiscent of one of the bonding MOs that we drew for the water molecule because what we can have here is an interaction of a bonding nature with the left hydrogen if we switch its phase to negative and simultaneously a bonding interaction uh, with the right hand hydrogen. Now what happened to the hydrogen on top here when we were using the px orbital? This was px and um, if we look at the D3H character table, we'll see that PX and PY are going to transform together as an E prime representation. So that'll be our, our Mulliken symbol to label orbitals involving the boron 2PX and 2PY orbitals. What happened to this top hydrogen? Well, it lies on a node of the PX orbital and so it can't contribute to this molecular orbital at all. But of course, this is a nice bonding molecular orbital. Its counterpart transforming as E prime involving the PY orbital PY over orbital points up like that along the y-axis. And its bottom lobe is shaded as, as shown. Uh, now we see that this lobe reaching up to the top hydrogen uh, can have a nice bonding interaction. And the lobe reaching down can have a kind of a, a less, a less favorable overlap, but still a bonding interaction with the two hydrogens down here on the bottom. as follows. And so this PY based orbital, um, these two together are the uh, basis for this E prime doubly degenerate uh, bonding pair of molecular orbitals. And uh, they together with the A1 prime molecular orbital over here constitute the three bonding molecular orbitals in the system, corresponding in the Lewis picture to the three lines that we draw between boron and the three hydrogen, three hydrogens. What happens to that boron PZ orbital? Well, let's look at that. That boron PZ orbital is coming up out of the plane, a lobe reaching toward us, and a lobe back below the plane that I'm shading back here. And that PZ orbital has all three hydrogens located in its nodal plane. And so all three of those hydrogens have no net interaction with this PZ orbital and can contribute nothing to the MO that is entirely the PZ or orbital on boron. Now this orbital, uh, because the system doesn't have electrons, is not even going to be occupied it's going to constitute the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital of the system. So already we can draw an energy level diagram for this system. As follows, we have three bonding MOs. I'll put the one A1 prime orbital as lowest in energy. And then I'll draw the pair of degenerate E prime orbitals. These are all doubly occupied with borons with the BH3 six valence electrons as follows. And then what we'll have is this totally non-bonding, this PZ orbital, atomic orbital becomes a non-bonding MO. 
So this one right here is, is effectively, uh, it would be a lone pair except it's virtual, so it's, it's unoccupied right here. Um, and then we have anti-bonding orbitals corresponding to the bonding orbitals. We have, it will have an A1 prime anti-bonding orbital as shown here. I don't know exactly where it is in energy, but I'm, I'm just making a guess that it will be the first anti-bonding MO. And then I'll draw E prime anti-bonding orbitals, E prime. And both of these get the star for anti-bonding character. And we always expect that our bonding MOs come lowest in energy, followed by our non-bonding MOs, in this case, uh, vacant. And then lastly, lastly, we'll find our anti-bonding MOs. Now, I've drawn one, two, three, four, five, six, seven molecular orbitals. I didn't actually draw out the anti the pictures corresponding to the E prime star set, but you can see that they would be obtained by just reversing the sign here and, and of the hydrogens. And uh, is that the right number of MOs? We can do a quick check. Well, boron, boron has S, Px, Py, Pz, and hydrogen. We have we have three S orbitals. Those are our valence orbitals for a total of seven valence orbitals. Seven atomic orbitals giving rise to seven molecular orbitals. So that's a check. And so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and and we have two of the MOs that are bonding MOs at the same energy because they both form the basis for a representation of the E prime set. And we knew that just by looking at the character table and seeing that X and Y transform together, are collected together in parentheses at the right hand side of the character table. So it made it easy, it made it easy for us to draw up the MO diagram for the BH3 molecule. And next you'll see that BH3 is not very stable on its own and will do chemistry because of its electron deficient nature.